So yesterday, remember when we were going to hike at Catalina State Park, we first started where the road divides, and to the right, it was kind of a smaller trail, and we both started to walk, and then something kind of stirred in the grass, made us run away. Ah. <laughs> that was very interesting because it brought to mind the concept of illusion and coming to knowledge. We had been talking about why people suffer really is because we mistake things for what they aren't. And from that platform, which is really the platform of ignorance, then fear is produced. Because if you don't know something and you judge it really quickly, normally the result is not favorable. You know, like there's a common saying in America, people fear what they don't know. But then the process of relieving that fear is really uh, coming to knowledge, bringing something to light. So we both kind of ran different directions because we thought perhaps it's a snake. You know, we're in a small place, this is Arizona, it's moving so fast, maybe a rattlesnake or some other dangerous animal. And yes, we didn't take time to actually kind of do our homework. Well, what is it? Probably the thing had already gone, so there was no need to study it. But it was an interesting, it was an interesting uh, experience for me because it brought me back to the point of the story that is told in the Vedas where a person mistakes a rope for a snake. So here in the West we have a lot of electricity and so that doesn't happen much here. But if you go to other countries where people live a simple life, they're doing their farming and stuff like that. Say for example you're walking back in the twilight, you know, it's a little dark, and you see an object lying in the road. So it could be a rope, it could be a snake, and if you're not fully informed, you could potentially harm yourself. So, in the beginning, when you see it, of course, the first thing comes is fear. You think, well, is that a snake? You know. So, that's fear, and how do you bring fear from the platform of fear to the platform of fearlessness? is you really have to add knowledge to the situation. So say you have a flashlight, you can flash it on the object, and then you'll see, okay, well, it has scales, and, you know, it's moving around, or it has eyes and all these different things, so it's definitely a snake. Now you have that knowledge, you move on in another direction to protect yourself, or you shed light on it, you shed knowledge on it, and you see it's a bunch of ropes together, and your fear is relieved. You have fearlessness. So either way, when we add knowledge to something, then fear becomes subsided. Um, this is the Vedic process. We're in ignorance, we add knowledge, and then from that knowledge we become free from fear, free from illusion. Um, Another way you can take a stick <laughs> and poke at the rope or the snake or whatever it may be and see how it responds. So if you take a long stick and poke it and if it doesn't move, maybe it's a dead snake, perhaps it's actually just a rope. And if it moves, then you can jump out of the road now because you are properly informed. So again, this is the process that if we are afraid of something, to relieve our fears of that thing, we come to knowledge. You know, so the whole material concept, you hear some philosophers, especially the Eastern philosophers, they say this material world is an illusion, that actually nothing exists here. 
But the fact is not that the material world is an illusion. We see all the elements. We see, you know, we see earth, we see water, we see fire, we feel the air, we experience space. So it's not that these things are an illusion. The illusion is that we are thinking that we can make a permanent situation because we are permanent beings. We're thinking we, are, we can make a permanent situation in an impermanent place. So we're spirit souls, we're eternal beings, we have a realm we exist in that is eternal. And now we find ourselves in a realm that is temporary, is nature is temporary. And so that illusion tells us that, oh well, I can make a permanent happy space of here. So people struggle for this happiness, people struggle for existence, and they don't get satisfaction. I mean, the great Mick Jagger tells us, I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> so we're, sa we're, we're struggling for satisfaction, um, looking for a result from a place that really satisfaction isn't. And it's not that, it's not from a negative perspective, but from a real, a reality perspective is that we have to shift our consciousness that matter doesn't satisfy the spirit like a fish you take the fish out of water you can give it a credit card you can give it the hottest girl you can give it the biggest club you can give a fish the best car but you're missing an essential thing it needs to be in a watery environment so the soul the spirit soul is in a material environment and we're acquiring all these different things and we don't experience happiness because we're acquiring these things in a space that's not our space. But how to make it our space is we have to add consciousness, add knowledge. And the knowledge that we need to add is that this material nature is also one of Krishna's energies. So in a sense it is spiritual too if we use it properly, if we see it properly. So if we see the material realm properly, add the proper consciousness to it, then we can experience it for what it is, and at the same time not be illusioned that, oh, this, you know, I will stay here forever, and I will enjoy here forever. No, you can enjoy it to some extent, but that enjoyment is temporary, and we have to recognize that. So the illusion is when we think, no, the enjoyment is forever, like that, just how we see the rope and we mistake it for a snake, or we see the snake and mistake it for a rope. That's also another illusion. So, knowledge begins, reality or satisfaction begins when we put things in their proper uh, perspective, when we see things for what they are. Um, this can definitely lead into a lot of other discussions for us. Um, but I'd like to keep it under 10 minutes, you know, just a short little discussions. Um, and if there are any questions, maybe we can actually have another 10 minute kind of question and answer part of it. Thank you.